So I deposited $2,000 into my business account and I'm hoping to grow it this year. So if you're new here, my name is Indy. I'm known as Just by Indy on Instagram and TikTok. I opened this business account because I really wanted to invest in my small business and have it separate from my personal account. Because I feel like up until this point, my Etsy account and everything that I make money from is connected to my personal account, including my full-time salary. And it's very hard to see where exactly my money is coming from whether it's from my full time or from my etsy account so i decided to separate the two and have a completely separate account just for my etsy account that way i can easily see how much my business is growing and have actual targets for the end of the year and also a place where i can have funds where I can pull from to fund certain supplies, certain um, products, and anything that I want to be spending from will be coming from this account rather than my personal account. And so I added $2,000 from my own personal account to this business account because the bank that I chose has a minimum requirement of having $2,000 at the end of the month in order to avoid any monthly fees. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over how exactly I'm going to be spending that $2,000 and of course, I'm not going to be spending it all in one go because like I said, I have to have $2,000 at the end of the month, every single month to avoid like a $15 fee. So first things first, I'm going to be spending it on a new product. Um, so if you don't already know, I'm known to sell a bunch of stickers and then over the years I have expanded to pins and keychains. So even though my bread and butter is stickers, I feel like it's sometimes hard to sell stickers at a profitable rate. A lot of people are not going to spend, you know, more than $5 on a sticker and even just saying $5 for a sticker is insane. But People are more willing to spend more than $5 for a pin or a keychain and honestly I feel like I'm starting to really enjoy making pins and keychains. Um, not that I'm gonna ever stop making stickers but I feel like I'm gonna spend more of my dollars on making pins and keychains. So a part of my spending is to spend more on replenishing some of my top sellers for pins and keychains and then introducing some new designs. Um, I'm working on a new collection so hopefully I can have them ready and launched by end of Q2 which is right before summer. And then also in the same vein as new products, I also want to introduce some new products into the assortment. Um, I've always had the dream of making like notebooks and adding more notepads into my store. Um, it just never happened because I was always so focused on pins and keychains and building that up. Um, but now that they're kind of built up and I have a solid um, assortment of those, I do want to introduce some new stuff into my shop. So hopefully I'll have those at the end of the year. Another thing that I would spend the $2,000 on is investing in pop-up shops. So last year I was invited to do three pop-ups and they were all kind of spontaneous. I kind of just reached out to the retailers and asked if they're doing any pop-ups or if they're looking for any products in their store and they said yes to pop-ups and I again spontaneously did three towards the end of the year and luckily all three of them were free. Um, because I feel like most pop-ups and vendor events have some sort of vendor fee and they can sometimes be very hefty. The ones that I've been seeing are like two or three hundred dollars and some being like five hundred. I haven't seen more than that but I feel like the ones like Comic Con or Anime Con, they're gonna be a lot more expensive because they expect a lot of traffic and I feel like I've always been like kind of shy and too scared to do pop-ups um, but the ones that I did I did have a good experience with I think my concern 
with pop-ups, especially the ones with vendor fees, is I always have this thought in the back of my mind that I have to make that money up somehow. Like I have to make two, three hundred dollars at the end of the day for it to be worth it. Um, and that's only working even. So I have to make more than that to make it worth it. But at the end of the day, sometimes you're not even paying for sales. You're also paying for potential customers. You're paying for the traffic for the event. So for example, around my area, there is a lot of events near the beach around the summertime. So that's definitely gonna cause a lot of traffic, especially to your booth, your tent. Um, so the $200, $300, it's definitely going to be worth it to have that many people in that area looking at your stuff. And sometimes they're not even like going to buy your product then and there. Maybe they'll pick up your business card and search you up on Etsy or your website and they'll purchase you then. You're paying for that potential customer. So this is definitely the year where I'm going to be pushing myself and just paying for that traffic. So next up is buying better equipment. I feel like I am putting more effort into my Etsy shop and also onto my YouTube. So I definitely want to have better equipment for both. So right now I shoot a lot of my content for TikTok and YouTube on my phone, but it's not always easy to edit YouTube videos on your phone. Um, so I think I want to have one, just one good camera, one good mic, and one good editing software so that I can do YouTube, TikTok, Reels all in one place, all in one equipment. Uh, plus, my phone is always out of storage, so it would be so nice to just have that good camera shooting everything. So basically, I'm kind of paying for a better process because I feel like right now I'm shooting on my phone, transferring it to my laptop, and then editing it on my laptop, and then finally transferring it back on my phone. And I'm sure you can like upload maybe TikTok or like reels on desktop but for some reason i like to make that like final edit and music selection on my phone so uh just if i can make it a little bit easier by having one place to shoot everything to edit everything that would be nice so the next thing that i would pay for is education um, and that includes like art classes. I feel like I haven't taken art classes since I was maybe in middle school and then I would just doodle here and there since then and now I'm like in my late 20s and I've never had proper training in drawing so it would be nice to have someone guide me and to improve my art here on out. Um, but also I want to take classes on like technology because I feel like that's ever changing with like AI and software. I think that's always helpful to know, especially like Photoshop. Like I haven't used again Photoshop in so long and I feel like in this day and age, if you're going to be in the art business, you're going to have to know Photoshop and the whole Adobe suite. So I would love to have just a crash course or a class to teach me all of that. So that is all I'm going to be spending my $2,000 on. I don't think I'm going to have a set budget per se for each of the categories, um, but I do want to stay within the $2,000 range because that is exactly how much I have put in to invest in. The reason being is because I feel like there's not going to ever be a set price for certain things. For example, the pins and keychains and just having new product. Even if I use the same manufacturer as last time, I feel like with everything happening in the world, it's definitely not going to be the same price. And I don't want to lower the quality just because the price increased a little bit. So... Like I said, not going to have a set budget for each category. I'm just going to have the max spend of $2,000 for this year. Um, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about what I would spend on my business. 
So until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video.